University, Professor Mori especially, for organizing this very uh, interesting, professionally interesting conference for all the international administrators. And um, today I'm going to talk about internationalization of domestic students, uh, in which I basically focus on uh, sending uh, students abroad. Uh, before going into the actual discussion about what I would like to uh, share with you, I must touch upon some of the history of Keio University. Because when you say uh, globalization on, or internationalization of universities, uh, you have to think about why internationalize. And in case of Keio University, uh, the university was uh, founded in 1858 by Yukichi Fukuzawa, who was uh, the visionary of modern Japan after a long uh, shogun government in which uh, Japan was totally closed from the outside world. So uh, from the beginning, uh, our founder Yukichi Fukuzawa tried to instill the spirit of jitsugaku, which is practical learning, and that idea uh, was uh, basically, uh, in principle, gained through his three overseas trip, which were very, very unusual at the time, but he somehow gained three opportunities to go to Europe, uh, including Russia, and I think some, I think historical facts show he had e even ventured out to Egypt, and also he had an opportunity to go to the United States on governmental missions. So uh, from the beginning, uh, our founder emphasized the importance of freedom, quality, and lifelong learning. So uh, international, uh, internationalization of Keio uh, University is from the beginning, the core mission of our university. And through over 150 years of history, we established as a leader in society and also uh, Based on Fukuzawa philosophy, we continue to be a provider of leadership for the future. So although uh, we have a very strong research-oriented um, activities, uh, for us, uh, educating future leaders are very important. So Keio University is uh, located basically uh, in metropolitan Tokyo area. And the Mita campus is in very close to uh, Tokyo Tower, so it's central heart of Tokyo. But other campuses, are, uh, although they are in greater part of Tokyo, but located in uh, Yokohama area and the Shonafuza campus. And the Shinanabachi campus is our uh, teaching hospital medical school, and it's in, located in Shinjuku. And the Shiba Kyoitz campus is newly um, merged uh, indep uh, formerly independent uh, school of pharmacy. So we have a quite a stretch campuses. And as a comprehensive university, we have 10 faculties, that means academic departments, and uh, 14 uh, graduate schools. And some of the bottom ones are the newly established graduate schools. So as I uh, emphasize, educating future leaders is a very important mission of Keio University. And as we have been in the, uh, the sector for 150 years, <laughs> and we have produced many distinguished alumni, including three former prime ministers of Japan, and two astronauts, and one of them, uh, women, and 200, quite a few uh, uh, major company CEOs, and distinguished overseas figures that were graduate, like, uh, such as uh, immediate past the governor of uh, the, uh, the Bank of Thailand. And uh, there are many uh, universities' rankings, but one of the uh, international rankings uh, done by French Grand de Col, uh, focusing on management studies, KO was ranked uh, 11th uh, in, in ranking because of uh, our um, graduates' uh, success in the industry. And uh, 
uh, we ha uh, one of our strengths is our Mitakai, which is called, which is the name in Japanese of our alumni organizations. And uh, we have more than 800 domestic alumni associations, and also uh, 60 overseas associations, which is rather unusual for Japanese universities. They are very active in some big cities like New York, or London. So this is a very, very brief overview of KO University international dimension. Um, the, uh, overall, we have uh, just over 1, 000, one, uh, nearly 1,200 international students. And uh, the same with other Japanese universities. Uh, most of them come from Korea, China, Taiwan, US, and France. And uh, we have uh, just over 220 uh, third, uh, around 230 study abroad students and nearly 200 uh, visiting researchers throughout the year, and uh, many faculties go overseas. And um, we have, uh, well, um, yes, and I have to also give you the number, uh, the total number of KO's university students is about uh, 30,000. So um, in comparison to big universities like uh, Todai and other national, uh, former national universities, uh, we are relatively small. And um, international partnerships, uh, we, uh, uh, as you can see, strong with Europe. And we have traditionally many uh, partnerships with North America. And recently, the number of uh, Asian partners are increasing. And KO has a selective membership uh, for international corporations such as APU, uh, Associated Pacific Rim Universities. Time is a leading, uh, in principle, European uh, engineering school a consortium, and recently joined the same, which is uh, the lead, uh, leading European um, management school consortium. Okay, so. So far, I have talked the overview of KO University's internationalization, and I think uh, from previous slides, I think KO looks like be being very uh, internationalized. But um, recently, as I work for um, both uh, in global initiatives and student affairs international programs, uh, we are now facing new challenges, and uh, that is, uh, inward-looking domestic students. Um, in, I think, last half a year or so, uh, mass media, uh, Japanese newspapers, are uh, focusing on this topic because um, uh, they are based on these factors. Current undergraduate students, especially, uh, all born at the end of Japan's so-called bubble economy. So uh, they never seen really affluent Japanese society. So they, they, they have grown up by looking at their parents working hard but not getting it. Uh, kind of, uh, the daily life is becoming less fluent, uh, affluent every year. And they are the first, uh, I would like to call the Pokemon generation. Uh, they are the ones who have had mobile devices for their own from quite early age. And they, for them, internet is just there at home. So they are quite happy at home in Japan with the internet. So they don't think it's necessary to go out and have a adventurous life. So, I, so you ask your students, why don't you go abroad? And say, oh, I can see everything, Facebook, and that kind of reaction is quite normative. And, um, uh, and for, there are quite, quite most, for, there are few, um, not so many, uh, some wealthy students they uh, have lived a life in which overseas experiences are abundant. For example, every uh, winter holiday, the whole family goes to Hawaii or uh, South Island, that kind of things. And although the Hawaii and Guam, that uh, tourist spot is made for Japanese tourists, but for the student, they have, feel they have enough international experience. So they don't think it's necessary to go abroad, that kind of things. And another big factor is in Japanese uh, employment system. Uh, they have to start uh, job hunting maybe in the beginning of third year. 
So that is because uh, the many Japanese uh, companies employ new graduates immediately after uh, undergraduate graduation as the same cohort. So if you are not graduating with the same group of people, you will miss a lot in getting a very good job. And uh, another factor uh, we are concerned is the challenges for some Japanese students uh, because Japanese economy is, has been staggering for quite a long time. Um, our students, because our, we are a private university, they are paying tuition, but that's just enough for their family to afford. So they think overseas studies, study abroad is just too much um, luxury so they just don't think about going abroad. So for them, it's impossible. So um, if I kind of look at uh, the internationalization of domestic Japanese students from different angles, I think there are two um, factors influencing. One is external pressure. Um, Although the Japanese corporations in general would like to hire new graduates in the same, as the same cohort at the same time, many global companies are increasingly seeking globally competitive students. That means uh, our students have to work with uh, anyone from China or Korea or United States or Europe with very good language skills. And, um, that is quite a challenge for some students. And also the recent, uh, uh, I think media, uh, at media is paying attention to the fact that Japan needs students not going abroad is that um, United States have been the typical destination for Japanese students to study abroad. And then that number has significant, significant dropped. And that was shown in some of the IIE and that kind of statistics. And that made, I think, United States worried quite a lot. And because Japan and the United States have a very close uh, political and that kind of uh, relationship, that have been heavily uh, discussed in media. And that kind of led to the argument that Japanese students are not going to study abroad anymore. And internal uh, concern is um, we have about uh, 200 exchange programs. And because Europe is very active with Erasmus programs and uh, Erasmus Mundus now coming out of Europe, they want to send many, many exchange students. And with exchange students, we have to counter the number of students to send abroad. But that is be becoming quite difficult. So uh, we are beginning to worry that, um, yes, uh, we may not be able to keep on with international exchange programs. And also, um, we have many international students on campus, but they traditionally took Japanese language program. So that means they are not uh, integrated with the Japanese students. So that opportunities uh, have been missed. So that's another concern we have. And the final concern or we have just realized is we have not been uh, reaching out to our J Japanese students about uh, international programs and uh, study abroad opportunities. So, uh, so in last couple of years, we have taken a couple of measures for Japanese students. One is annual study abroad fair for entry level campus. Um, many students that reach Keio University have had a vigorous entrance examination preparation before reaching to university. So they have been focusing on uh, university entrance examinations. That doesn't necessarily mean they can speak English or they have had TOEFL examination or IELTS preparation. So we have to uh, let the student know in order to do a study abroad, maybe in the very far, immediate after in, entering university, you have to take TOEFL or IELTS and that kind of languages examination to be, uh, to be able to apply for our exchange programs. And also, uh, we have um, developed a um, few summer spring short programs. And also, we discovered some of them, after participating in the short program, they will be comfortable and confident. And they will then apply for the uh, year long study abroad program. So, uh, so summer programs, short programs, are very good uh, trials for some of our uh, less courageous students. 
And some academic department, especially with graduate program, they have started double degree programs with selected partner universities. Uh, that will give more incentive for graduate students because they can get double degrees after completing the program. And we even started the fee waiver for privately funded study abroad students. Uh, exchange program, uh, they pay the tuition to care university so they can go to a partner institution free of charge. But privately funded study abroad students, uh, we, we just ask them to pay the full tuition fee to keep the place. But we have changed that measure. And also, uh, we have changed, um, I think some other universities said they are now uh, building centralized office. Uh, in our case, we decentralized office because uh, in order to totally, as a university, to get internationalized, we must have international students go to different offices. So we have put international students to go to different um, places rather than coming to the international center office. And we are also introducing a new residential dormitory, dormitory uh, for in which a domestic and international students can live together. So. Um, What's next? Um, I think um, as an administrator of international um, office, uh, I think we must be more proactive to encourage students to go abroad. And as I mentioned a little bit, uh, diversify and increase Hamas program so that they can have more trials. And we have quite a few in English taught programs, over 100, but they are just there. So I think we have to have more curriculum orchestrated so that it would be more attractive to our Japanese students. And also, we have to review scholarships to give more incentive to students, uh, to be uh, to students with academic excel excellence, but who do not uh, apply for stu study abroad. And also, and it's a long-term project, but we have to maybe seek collaboration with industry to change the Japanese strict new graduate employment system. I think time is up. Uh, I just wanted to show the list of uh, double degree. Courses, and I just wanted to do a little bit about we are doing uh, Global 30, and I thank you very much.